That's it. Scissors on the bucket. Today we're going to Millard Creek and we're gonna check and count all the fish because we want to make sure all the fish are healthy and we want to count how many fish are going through the river to see if the river is healthy and it is just really cool. I love, I love nature and I love the water. So we're gonna set the stuff down. And inside that tub is uh, another net. Okay, so you can see it's all cleared off now and those fish are probably waiting up there, right? I created youth and ecological restoration about 15 years ago and my vision was to get youth out into nature to build healthy relationships with the natural world. It's a little deep, eh? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this stuff, this uh, detritus is actually the correct scientific word, but you can see that there's all kinds, there's mostly maple flowers and then we're just going to put it down here and all of this stuff feeds the stream right it all goes into the ecosystem and makes nutrients for the stream and for the insects the aquatic insects and for the fish when i take youth out in nature i just let nature guide the process and whatever is going on is is the teaching for that day we'll open this up okay lots of fish today these are coho smolts. One trout. Oh, there's a trout. That's a uh, cutthroat trout because they have a slash under the jaw. They're quite heavily spotted. A rainbow trout would be not spot as spotted as this, right? And the other thing is that you know that their mouth goes beyond the eye. Yeah. Yeah, okay. In the first phase of the program, youth work with me one-on-one -on -one, and it's 20 hours. I find that it takes about 10 of those hours to start to build a strong level of trust with them. It's like ecotherapy. It helps calm the kids down, it improves their sense of well-being. They get to step out of the school and their family life and it's just them being immersed in the natural world. It's calm. You can, you can sit out there and look at things and you can be peaceful and you can, it helps you with a lot of stuff. If you have a lot of stress or something on your shoulders, you can let it go. This is a Pacific lamprey and uh, they're really hard to hold on to, but uh, they spawn at this time of year. I think they're such gentle creatures and, and uh, they don't hurt you. Okay, okay, try it, try it, try it again. It won't hurt, they won't hurt you at all. They're so gentle. <laughs> I like about the lamprey. I didn't know they suck onto you, and it was really weird. I thought they bit, but no, they don't. And it was really cool how they have like gills, like like dots on their sides, and it looks kind of looks like an alien. Get this guy out of there. You like them, hey? Yeah, they're cool. <laughs> they are cool. Yeah. One of the favorite places where the youth go is up to Oyster River. It's a very strong salmon enhancement program that they have. It's actually one of the best in the province of British Columbia. And there's about 30 old retired guys that go up there every Tuesday morning. So there's an intergenerational aspect and mentoring that occurs. My name is Braden. I wanted to join this program because I thought it would be nice to not be in the normal settings of a school and get out in nature and try to help protect the wildlife. These are Chinook fry. So you can tell a Chinook. This fish is a little bit on the golden side, so that usually is a Chinook. I like catching the fry because I could just put the scoop in there and I take out a huge amount and it's just like, whoa, I didn't know there was that many in here. Oh, you got quite a bunch there, eh, Braden? Nice. Maybe you could take a bucket so you can see where we're putting them. So these are Chinook fry 
and we're releasing to them in here, which is uh, channel number two. And they're going to rear in here. We're going to feed them for three months. Go ahead, let them go. Getting outdoors gets me away from just going, staying in my room for four hours playing Xbox, and it's it's a, it's. I honestly prefer outdoors than being in my room doing absolutely nothing. So we're gonna feed these coho fry and with salmon enhancement, we feed them in, in the natural environment. They feed on different insects and they're gonna rear in here for a year. So just sprinkle a little bit of food on there and watch how they come up and just give them a little time because they're, remember they're little babies, right? I felt like I was helping and it was nice to know that I was doing something right. When I see an animal on YouTube or phone, it seems a lot more like fake in a way. Like it doesn't actually exist, but when you see it in real life, it's just a, like just nobody else knows what it's like. Another place where youth go in the spring is uh, Solom River. They have a rotary screw trap to capture a portion of the juvenile salmon that are going downstream. In 1999, it was the most endangered river in British Columbia because of acid mine drainage from a copper mine, which killed off a lot of the populations of salmon. They have since capped the side of the mountain and the river is pretty healthy again, and we're involved in environmental monitoring of that watershed. Okay, so we'll just count them. All we're doing is an estimate. We're not going to give an exact count. Mars takes injured animals and brings them here, and they rehabilitate them so that maybe one day they can go back into the wild and live their normal bird life. Like ravens and crows are very prone to imprinting when they're young. I got the chance so to, this hat. to try to feed a baby raven. And then you get to pull this stuff down over your face. Um, it just kind of blocks your facial features so that they don't imprint on you. You take the tongs and then you twirl it around the bird's mouth. And then it maybe would open its mouth and maybe it wouldn't. And when it did, and you put the food in its mouth, it wouldn't eat it. <laughs> So I'm going to show you how to pick them up. So we also got to work with some mallard ducklings. This has been my favorite so far. So you just kind of grab them and just hold them not too tight. We actually had to pick so them up and move them from one area to another area. <laughs> that is the best thing I've ever seen. Clean their cages. That's usually what we do. Look, see? There's, I think that's Lanny in the oh corner gosh, over there. Tiny. You got to see this red tailed hawk named Horace. And it was crazy because we got to go in the cage about like one meter away from him. And I just got to watch him get his feet clean because he has this thing called Bumblefoot. And it's like athlete's foot for birds. It was unlike anything I've ever seen before. Well, in person, and not for, uh, through like a video or something. I've learned that I like animals way more than I thought I did, and it's been very fun. And yeah, it's, it's been awesome. Just go ahead. Well, you know what First Nations people say is that when the tide is out, the table is set. And I think that's true for the birds and the animals too, right? The Comox Estuary is an incredibly diverse place. In the springtime at low tides, we count herons and eagles there. The youth learn about scientific data collection and behavioral observations. Did you make that four eagles? At the marina? Yeah, so I'm going to recount the herons too. Okay. 
Wow. 16 herons. And we're on to Air Park, right? Yeah. Okay. Keep looking around. Swing around to Comox Bay now and have a look at that, right? Cool. Hey, look at those gulls over there. They're gathering there and that and they're they've got some food they're feeding on over there. There's several seals over there. No way! Yeah, I think they're trying to get the seals. Well, or maybe they're trying to feed on the food that the seals are feeding on. I think that might actually be more than three. I think there's like five. Is there? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we'll go in and say, oh, hi, I'm Wendy. What's your name again? <laughs> I am, I'm feeling really nervous about that presentation because I haven't spoken in front of people since grade three. It's going to be scary. Is it? Yeah. I'm, I, don't, I get stage fright a lot. For completion of phase one of the program, the youth do a presentation for a community group and I allow them to choose where they're, they're most comfortable. Blocks in the creek so the salmon can go up the river. Walking up the creek was a little hard because we were wearing chest waders. That was terrifying. My, my presentation was just, it was scary. I want to do this program because I thought it would be fun and I get to do things I couldn't do otherwise. If we keep preserving nature, the future of nature will have a long, long lifespan. I love this program as it gave me something to do instead of me doing nothing. They flipped out. My classmates flipped. They what? They were crazy for me. It's just a fear I have. Because I am I don't know why, but I'm just scared of being like a speaker in public or speaking in general. Because if I say something dumb or mess up, I'm going to get called out. I've never seen that happen. I'm just afraid it's going to happen to me. I'm doing the presentation at Puddle Duck because that's the preschool I went to when I was little. And if they can, if they remember me, that'd be even funnier. Brayden chose your group because he came here 11 years ago when he was your age. After I saw the eagle, I got to feed a baby robin. I had to use a little paintbrush with some bird feed on it. I thought working with people at Mars was fun and easy going. If anybody wanted to get more in depth with nature, they should go do this program. Thank you very much. I never realized there are so many nice people in this community. I'm so used to seeing the same people every single day that it's nice to meet new people. I did my presentation at a senior's home. They were very supportive of it and I had a lot of anxiety during the presentation but I got through it. When I first came to the program I was really scared. Honestly I was like terrified of being near any animals but this past couple weeks I've been growing closer to Wendy and the animals and learning more. The third week I got to go to Solom River. I caught three types of fish. Pink salmon fry. <laughs> After I want to cuddle that thing. <laughs> it was a decently good presentation. It wasn't like 10 out of 10 but it was about like an 8, maybe 5. Thank you. The task at hand today is to uh, map each individual tree and uh, to describe sort of the health and the size. Um, so, Brady, what's the next one? Uh, age class. Age class, yeah. There's a phase two of the program, and with phase one, I'll let any youth start doing the program. With phase two, they have to show a certain level of responsibility. There's two youth that work together with a biologist and myself, learning advanced ecological inventories, scientific data collection, and communication skills. Ow, that was prickles. That was pain. You deserved it. True. At least I didn't push your leg against the other property line. Does anybody see any woodpecker holes up there? Yes. Yep. Great. And do you remember what I said yesterday about what kind of woodpecker made those little tiny holes? Yes. Sapsuckers. Sapsuckers, exactly. Oh, 
Off you go. Thanks so much. This one? Let's see here. So nice Starting and tight. Find the zero. So and what's the number say? 103. 103 centimeters. Fantastic. It was fun doing the cedar tree measurements because like I got to do it with like Brayden and he's a pretty good guy. He's not like, oh my god, like I'm Mr. Perfect, but he's a pretty good guy. Ow! Are you new to this? I don't like bushwhacking. It's painful. It's not bushwhacking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you going through bushes. I'll hold this. Come on, little man. I'm taller than you. Ow, that hurt. Yeah. So it's going to be just about a fifth of the way from that corner point to that. I really admire nature and I like being outside a lot. Like it's nice and quiet and like you can hear like all the footsteps and stuff like that. Like you can hear like a rock falling onto the floor, like the ground or you can hear a branch crack and like the sound of birds is really calming too. It's not as much chaos and it's not as much anxiety because there's not much sound. It's just like a white noise. It's really nice. It helps a lot with anxiety unless like there's a bear. And then you're like kind of screwed. And the creek went along the, along this side and there was a, a I just do it because it's a fun thing to do and there's a lot of perks that come with it. It's really good job experience because I would really want to get a job in something like, you know, just nature and animals and stuff like that. Can you please record the uh, wedded width for the downstream end? And if you can hold this at the wedded edge. Yep. Okay, so you release that uh, and say start, and I'll go down and um, get the time. Well, we have this very scientific piece of equipment of a wood chip. We use to time um, how long it takes to go down the stream and then show the average speed and current of the stream. Stop. 47 seconds. You have to keep a record of just salmon lifespan, how they're doing, if, they're, if the population is growing, if they're decreasing in this side channel. Okay, he's on his side, I'm just gonna grab. I had also learned a lot about how to distinguish differences between rainbow or cutthroat trout, what actually salmon fry look like <laughs> at that age. Um, this one is 63. Stop being a fish. 2.8 as well. I think the program is a really awesome thing to do and to just experience. And being in here, it's just nice. I love kind of second growth forests like this that are all mossy and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. For completion of phase two, the youth lead a public tour. They, they do it together, we spend a whole day preparing for the tour, and then on the final day, they, they give the tour. This is the main creek over here, on this side. And this is the, cha the side channel. There's an intake pipe. The intake opens and closes to let more or less water into the side channel. Uh, Pacific Sideband. 
Yeah. Yeah. So you kind of just got to keep your eyes peeled to not step on a million slugs. Yep. Yep. There we go. Right, yeah. And now I'm that's trying to get the stickle back. Yeah. Yeah. He's got beautiful blue eyes. There we go. This one is a coho. Okay, it's good sign. If he was a cutthroat, there would just be a whole ton of black speckles. All they find their voice. It's like their personalities come out in the tour, and it's incredible to watch their transformation from being quiet and nervous to just being really strong and confident in themselves. The total suspended solids, uh, DO, which is dissolved oxygen, and if below 22% oxygen, salmon can suffocate. A weir was built to measure the water flow. Mm -hmm. So like, if you look down there, there's a little wall with like a little V shape, which kind of like holds out all those like nasty things. Um, GW Solutions helped set up the six monitoring stations. The six sites have been monitored once a month for five years. I don't really like talking to people, like going outside, I keep to myself, or like I hide somewhere, anywhere, honestly. It's helped me interact with people, so I'm not as like scared to talk to people and I'm not as scared that they're gonna hate me or they're not gonna like me. So this, this forest here is a Millard Park and it's in the city, Courtney. And a woman who did a lot of environmental activism in our community, she protected Millard Park. So look at this beautiful forest here. And it's because of Ruth Masters that we have this forest. There was a presentation at my school about the ecological restoration program and after hearing about it, I was really excited because it was about learning about nature and going on hikes and going through rivers. And I've just learned a whole bunch about fish and trees and just how everything ties together in nature. In the fall, one of my favorite things to do with the youth is put them in a pair of chess waders and hike up a creek with them looking for spawning salmon. So this is a culvert. I mean, I don't know when it was put in here, but uh, it's really old. Yeah, what a nice place, eh? Okay, we're gonna walk up the creek now. So just go slow. Take your time, because we don't want to fall down. I got a little bit nervous walking into the creek because I wasn't sure how deep it was. But after a while, just kind of realizing Using my walking stick to kind of like figure out what's in front of me before stepping helped me from falling over. So we gotta look around to see if there's any salmon. I mean, there'd probably be dead if there is any. And sometimes where you have to look is on the sides because if there's bears around, the bears would take the salmon to the sides of the creek. And that's how the salmon fertilize the trees. It's because the bears take them to the side. Yeah, it's true. I'm out here because I'm interested in science and marine biology and the ecosystem. It's just a lot more interesting and fascinating than being stuck at home or stuck in a classroom. The fish help the trees by fertilizing the trees because the bears and the birds take them to the sides of the stream. When the salmon come here, they come back to where they were born. And what the female salmon does is she'll lie on her side and flap her tail, and then she'll dig a hole. And she'll lay the eggs in the hole after. She takes quite a while, because she's a mom, right? She wants the nest to be just right. Too much sediment can kill the adult salmon. It can also kill their eggs. I know a study on the West Coast that showed a 50% decline in egg to fry survival from siltation from logging, taking away the trees, and it increased the silt that goes into the stream, and it killed 50% of the eggs. When two streams join together like this, it's called the confluence. So this is the confluence of Millard and Piercy Creeks. You're not just yeah. sitting at a desk looking at a video or listening to your teacher. 
you're actually there in the moment learning about what you're seeing and feeling. Oyster River Enhancement Society has been doing salmon enhancement work on the river since 1983 and the declines in salmon stocks on that river was from poor logging practices but they have been doing really good work for a long time and the salmon stocks are pretty healthy now. I would highly recommend this program, it's very enjoyable. For, with my experience, I have had nothing but fun so far. Hold it like there. Alright, now we're going to go in and cut our belly. The basic gesture of egg take is we're trying to harvest eggs from the females that can produce eggs and fertilize them so that we can release all the salmon. Always talked about in the news and all over the internet as that is that uh, global warming and everything and it's really nice to help out the environment, keep it going and make sure it's all safe and healthy. That was another part of the one of the things we did is we were cutting up part of the heart and testing it to see if there's any disease so that we can hopefully prevent it from spreading. I take a small piece of this, cut it off. Okay, so you can't area. touch the, don't touch the bag with the fins. Okay. Start from the top. Excellent. Good. Perfect. Good. Excellent. Done. Excellent. You're done. That quick. Is that the last fish? I've always loved to go out into the wilderness and watch animals and just stay out there with them. And it's always very nice to just be in a peaceful place. Today we're going to be catching some fish in the Oyster River. The spawners are here. We're targeting on Coho and Chinook. We're going to be putting a big net in the river and catching the fish. Then we have to dip net them and see what species they are and see if they're ripe so that we can do an egg take. Hey, my name's Nick. Um, I chose this program because I wanted to be outdoors. I wanted to be trying new things, stuff I hadn't thought about doing before, and I definitely got that out of it so far. Try to pull on the bottom, on the bottom line. To uh, catch the salmon at Oyster River, we had to get the giant net and we basically had to curve it all the way around where it was deep, where all the salmon were going to nest and spawn. We had some people, including myself, at far end who were banging different things like garbage can lids, buckets, to uh, get the fish and scare them more into the middle so they couldn't escape. And uh, we ran the net out afterwards and cinched it in, and then I was in charge of scooping them out, finding the ones we wanted. Just go down over there and try to snag some, because we, yeah. It was hard. <laughs> it was it was really hard. Netting the fish and keeping them from flailing around because they're actually way stronger than I expected them to be. So holding on to like four of them in a net at once and keeping it in the water and keeping them from twisting themselves up is actually really hard. Okay. okay, we can take this one back. We had two female, they were both Shinnok species. We were getting their eggs for the hatchery. It was started with them being dried because if anything like water or dirt or anything gets into the eggs, it affects them negatively. They were cut down the stomach and there was a huge amount of eggs. It was just like pouring out. It was, it was, like, it was crazy because it was like 90% of their insides were just eggs. 
Yeah. It's called salmon and enhancement. Oh, okay. And we're, we're not letting them spawn in the river because we've got incubators, and I could show you incubators back uh, okay. yeah. And we put the eggs and the milk together, and we mix it together and put some water in it, and it actually foams up. On my second trip out with Wendy, we hiked up Morrison Creek, and this time I actually got to see some salmon spawn. These are coho, and there's a female there in the lead. You can usually tell them because their tail's whiter. They've been, they've been uh, digging reds, and uh, red is a salmon nest. There's one female, there's six males, and one jack. <laughs> Look at that. Eh? Isn't that really a beautiful color of red? Yeah. That's awesome. All right, so there's a group of salmon over here. We're going to go a little closer to get to count because we can't see them very well, but we want to move really slowly, right? People are raising money to buy 52 acres up here. It was a dream that Jim Palmer with Morrison Creek Streamkeepers, it was $870,000 and him and his wife said, we want to buy it and they didn't think they would and they've got 90% of the money now. So this is going to become a park. It will be preserved for the salmon and for people. We're really fortunate here in the Comox Valley and we still have streams where salmon are coming back to spawn in their natural habitat and it's critical that we protect these wild spaces for them. They finished it and we all survived. <laughs> I would recommend this program to anybody. You'll just feel much better about yourself like personally. This program has definitely increased my connection to nature by a lot because I'm actually in nature. <laughs> In school, we have salmon in our fish tanks, but out here, we get to actually see them more, we get to catch them, and we get to have a lot more fun. It's a lot more hands-on, there's a lot more freedom, kind of catered a bit more to you as a person instead of a whole demographic of 30 kids. As I've been observing like people in general, they've become more antisocial as they don't really need to leave the house at all. They just, they, if they stay, they can stay indoors and just talk to everybody on, online. But if you take a moment to watch nature and just sit there and watch for some time, you'll begin to understand it better, I think. When I'm outside with nature and stuff like that, I'm like interacting and helping out and how to take care of that and how to like help with that. And like that kind of stuff is what I'm kind of learning how to do right now. I like doing things that other people are doing around me because it feels like I'm contributing to something that will lead to a bigger thing in the future. Jack and you. Yeah, I mean, because this is all part of learning how, how we're uh, documenting the cedar growth here. I feel like she is in this to raise the awareness for the fish, so that in the future we don't end up having no fish and no food and nothing to eat and nothing to take care of our environment. 